gentlemen, and welcome back to another Let's Look At with Zebu Nation. And as you can see today, we're going to look at Desktop Dynasties Pro Football. This is a little uh, independent game that just came out of early access last week. I believe March 8th, 2019 was when it came out of early access. And as you can see, revision 1.0.5, it's already had a couple of updates since its release. So the developer is uh, out there working hard at, at new improvements and bug fixes and all that stuff. Speaking of the developer, it, uh, it is a little company called Golden Crest Games. And if you go to their website, you'll see that uh, it was started by a gentleman named Sean. And he employs his three children to help him make video games. So they, uh, they do all the programming and art and designing and stuff as a family. So that's a cool little story for, for the developer. Now, uh, as for the game itself, it is a sports management game. So I figured, you know, a lot of the people who come to my channel are there for Football Manager, and that's a sports management game. So, hey, maybe you'd be interested in this as well, since it just came out. You might be seeing it in your Steam recommendations the way that I did, and uh, maybe you thought about picking it up, and I'll run through it for you so you can see what it's all about. So, let's start a new game and get this train on the tracks, get this train rolling, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go. Here's your basic screen. You got your legendary football conference, your epic football conference. And this is where you select your team. You know, you decide who you're going to play with and, uh, you know, what type of team you want. Because as you can see, each of these teams, not only do they have a little logo and a little name, they also have a type of game that they like to play. What, what's their offensive and defensive strategies? So, for example, the Grizzlies have run offense and man defense. I kind of like that. I've played a few seasons, and I like the running game. I feel like the running game is probably the most consistent, and I think man defense is also the most consistent. Although the Grizzlies' name is kind of just basic and kind of boring. I do like the name Saskatoon Sasquatch. Where are these guys located? They have pass offense and zone defense. Eh, I don't know about that. So let's look for another, how about the Kraken? Run offense, man defense, nice purple colors, nice little squid monster there. Let's pick them as our team. There we go. It doesn't really matter which team. You can just kind of pick the team based on uh, the logo that you like best because they're very much um, customizable. You can even change the color. You can change the uniforms, all that stuff. But here is where it really matters. Your offensive and defensive coordinators. These are the people that basically determine uh, how your team plays. For so example, you can see here, my current offensive coordinator is Daniel Howell. Four wide receivers. That's no good. They said the Kraken were a running team. We don't need a four wide receiver set. Because this is only eight man football. So if you have four wide receivers, th three offensive linemen, and a quarterback, that's all eight players. So you got no running back. It's hard to run the game when you got hard to hard to run the ball when you have no a running back. So we're gonna choose. Let's see, Kevin Valenzuela. He's got a two tight end formation. You know he prefers you know running backs, strong tight ends, balanced offensive line. You know that's pretty good. Two wide receivers, one running back. That's more of a balanced offense. Player development comes into it. You know, they really develop their running backs and wide receivers. Tight ends get worse under this coach, so I don't really know that I want to pick them. Um, one, one wide receiver, two running backs, and one tight end. That's interesting. Well, this coach really coaches up tight ends, but I don't know that we... We need that. Anyway, well, this seems to be the best coach right here. Noah Riley, two wide receivers and two running backs. That's an interesting formation, but he's a very good coach. You know, really improves running backs, really improves wide receivers. Yeah, let's, let's try that. Let's try them. So we're going to hire them as our offensive coordinator. Now our defensive uh, coordinator, Luigi Garza. 
Um, also the special teams coach, apparently. So two defensive linemen, two linebackers, three cornerbacks, and one safety. Sort of a nickel defense, I guess you would say. That seems fine. We'll keep Luigi as our coach, unless there's a really good coach. Here's a really good coach, G Dion Johnston. You know, really improves the DL, really improves the safeties. I think this also means either doesn't improve these guys at all, linebackers and corners. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep Luigi and just, just move on with things. So, I, when I said it doesn't matter what team you take, it's because you can just change your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, number one. And number two, you have no players on your team at all. They start each new save starts with a draft to draft all your players. So like a tw I think it's a 20 or 21 round draft that you have to go through. So you pick players, you have a salary cap up here on the right. You can see you've got a $620 salary cap. Uh, you can see the players down here that you've got to choose from. And you can see your position in the draft. Now we are the Kraken, so we're third. Third in the draft, so we should be able to pick a pretty good player. Um, but as you can see there, our roster was non-existent. So... Let's just uh, start the draft, and I'll show you a uh, I'll show you a couple of picks, and then I'll I'll fast forward through this, and we'll get to what comes after the draft. So here we go. Start the draft. Uh, we can make a pick for the storm. They picked a player. Now, if you're like 15th or something in the draft, you can just hit auto to my pick, and it'll it'll go to that pick. But there we go. Kraken. We are on the clock. So, question is, what sort of player do we want? What sort of player do we need? And over here, it shows our depth chart. So, we need one quarterback. We need two running backs, two receivers, three linemen, two defensive linemen, two linebackers, three corners, and a safety. Now, when you have a pick this high, you probably want to pick, like, the best available player. We can sort by salary to see who's the highest paid player. Ashley Ritter. You know, $83, that's quite a bit. Age 23, though. Nice young player. It's, uh, offensive lineman, it seems to be. Pass block, run block. Can kick a little bit. Special teams. Um, if all these abilities don't mean anything to you or you don't quite know how to, how to decide what this player is or what this player is good at, you can... Uh, Click over here by position, and it'll show you what their position is. So they're a 97-rated offensive lineman. So these percentages should be familiar to you if you play Madden or a lot of other those kind of uh, American sports games where it's out of a 99 rating. So this guy is 97 out of 99 rating as an offensive lineman. That's outstanding, but do you really want to draft a uh, offensive lineman number one? I don't know about that. Here's a 97 speed, looks like defensive player, linebacker, cornerback, safety. 79, 81, 81, pretty good. You know, a lot of times you might want to start with a quarterback as your number one player. So we got a couple of choices here. So I'm a little bit older, 28, 27, but still very good. Let's see, what are his skills so he's got 88 passing 88 passing strength he can run block for whatever good that does now this guy down here though seems to be the best darren walsh he's a year younger he is five dollars more expensive but he's faster he's stronger he's a better runner he can even play a little defense you know i think we will pick darren walsh the quarterback as our number one pick so there we go let's make the pick and there we are we have him on our team so we got 20 rounds of this i'm going to pause it here and then come back and show you what our roster looks like when it's all over so pause 
Okay, we're back, and here we are on the team screen. We finished the draft, and you know I think I did a pretty good job. It, it seemed to be a all-around pretty good draft this time around, so uh, I'm happy with it. I'm pleased. I think we got a pretty decent team. Now, uh, the computer picks the roster for you at the beginning. If you, you know, if you want to change it around, you can. But here's how it works. So every player plays either offense or defense. You can't play both. However, each player can play on special teams. So that's what this third rank here is. So if you want somebody to play on offense or defense or special teams, you go down here to the, uh, well, you click on the manage depth chart and it brings up this down here. And uh, you basically pick a player. So let's say... Alicia Woods is right now special teams eight. Let's say we don't want him there. We'll take Augustine Schwartz instead on special teams eight. So you'd come over here, you find the position you want, special teams eight, and there we go. Augustine Schwartz is now there. Although I really disagree with that uh, take. So we're going to put Alicia Wood back on special teams eight, and there we go. I don't like how it rearranges it every time you click it, but. You know, that's just a sort of a UI preference, I suppose. So over here are your team controls on the left. We already clicked on the manage uh, depart manage depth chart. Uh, we can go back to ratings view is basically the same, same screen. Finance view, however, is a little different. It shows you the finances and how everything adds up. So as you can see here, we started out with 600 and whatever dollars in salary cap room now we have two dollars in salary cap room so drafted you know right up to the edge and here are the salaries so each player has a contract that has a salary amount but it also has a number of years so for example walker mccall 38 dollars a year for four years now, usually the older the player, the longer the contract, but that's not necessarily true. The contracts, I guess, are randomized at some point. However, if you have a young player, or any player for that matter, that you want to sign and they reach the end of contract, all you have to do is come over here and click sign extension and uh, you know they will be signed on for however many years. It says three, three years at $18.00 isn't too bad you know for a 25 year old um you know i'll wait a little later in the year before i make that signing for sure but that's how easy it is you just click sign extension and he signed no negotiating no bargaining nothing like that now the other thing you can do if you happen to be over the salary cap you got a few options you can uh you know click on a guy and release the player now releasing the player will get rid of their salary However, there a percentage of that stays on your cap as dead salary cap. So that's what this number here is. So for example, let's say I was $8 over the cap. I could cut this guy. It would take $12 off of this year's cap, but it would add $2 on to next year's cap. So that would be dead money. And so you can see the more players that you cut, the more that adds up, and it makes it more difficult in the coming seasons to put your roster together. So maybe something better to do would be to trade this player away. And the way you trade the player away is you just click on their name, and you go over here to shop player around. Now, this is a bad example because nobody wants this guy. But... There would be offers here from other teams if somebody wanted him. So let's go back to the team screen. Let's, um, let's try Vernon McKnight. Is anybody interested in him? Nope. Let's try a better player. How about Darren Walsh, our star quarterback? Shop him around. You see, everybody in the league wants a piece of Darren Sharp. And this is what they'd be willing to trade. They'd be willing to trade, you know, Mostly their quarterbacks, but also wide receivers, offensive line, defensive line. They'd be willing to trade, you know, a lot of players and really good players. So let's say, you know, you were, you looked at your team and you're a better running team than a passing team. And you're like, well, maybe I don't need such a good quarterback. Maybe I need a better running back. You could trade this guy away for a better running back and then you know, trade your old running back for a better quarterback or something like that. And so during the middle of the season, you can, 
you can sort of change your roster around and improve it a little bit here and there. And we're not going to do that because I don't really want to trade away my star quarterback. Now, the other thing that happens is sometimes the computer teams will offer you trades, and that will be here under your manage trade offers. Now, we don't have any here, but basically you'll see the same thing over here. You'll, you know, this, this offer right here, you'll see something similar to that uh, down here when you get a trade offer. Now, your offensive and defensive coordinators, these are kind of important because these show you um, what your plays are going to be. These are your plays. This is your offensive playbook right here. Now, these plays are not really changeable, at least not directly. You can't click on them. You can't move them around. You can't you know, edit them or anything like that. So if you don't like your playbook, you'll have to wait till the end of the season to go hire a new offensive coordinator or you can hit <laughs> excuse me you can hit refresh playbook right here and that will sort of mix the plays up a little bit it'll bring in some other plays now it you only get the one formation so there's a limited number of plays to choose from it's it's however many plays come with this formation but you can sort of keep clicking around the refresh playbook until you find a set of plays that you like. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's not a ton of them to choose from. But, um, you know, it does add a little bit of variety. Like, for example, there's a few more quarterback runs in some of these. So maybe if, you, if you've got a running quarterback, you might want those in there. Or if you don't have a running quarterback, you might want to click around until there's less plays with the quarterback running. Um, you know, maybe some better looking pass plays or some slant plays. You know, some interesting, I don't know if I like these plays. I like these plays with the running backs coming out of the backfield. You know, got some wide receiver sweeps there, quarterback sweeps, sprints. Only two quarterback runs. That's not too bad. So we'll try this playbook right here. That seems good. And you can do the same thing with your defensive coordinator, although that's a little bit more limited. You only... you. You got less plays to choose from. So, you know, I don't... Oh, there's a lot of blitzes in this playbook. I kind of like that. So, uh, you know, I'll keep this playbook. I don't want to mess with that. But here's our formation. Two defensive linemen, two linebackers out wide, safety in the middle, and three corners. So it is definitely a nickel-type defense for Luigi Garza. All right. So let's play a game. How about that? Here's our schedule. We've got a 16-week schedule, as you can see here, and then the playoffs, the wild card round, the divisional round, conference finals, and then the championship game. So, you know, you got your buttons here. Play my game, sim all CPU games, or finish the week. So let's play our game, and here we are. We're playing against the machine in the first game, which is funny. That's the team that I have taken in my other save. So it's Machine versus Kraken. Uh, looks like the... It says minus 25. I don't know what that means. Maybe maybe we're favored. Is that how that works? Anyway, I don't know about that. But here's how you play the game. You have your plays down here. Now this is the kickoff, so we only have the one choice. But you click on it, and that brings up the formation. And it shows you what that will look like on the field. It will also show you the you know what your the opposing team looks like on the field and then when you're ready you call the play now you don't have to control any of the players or anything like that they just do what they do and here we go he's about to get a kick return on us anyway so there we go let's try the man-to-man -man d blitz so we bring it up he's a running team two tight end formation so let's call this blitz and see what happens we just sacked the quarterback because he was waiting around for something. So that worked. So let's try it again. <laughs> let's call the same play. Here we go. Again, not very many yards. Um, let's just blitz one guy this time around. Man-to-man -man coverage. Let's go. He's going to do a quarterback sweep. Not going to get there. All right, so now it's fourth down and four. You can see up here, 
the down and yardage. So we're going to go to special teams, and we're going to punt return. Because if you don't know American football, you get four downs to make 10 yards, and then it's a turnover. So most teams punt on fourth down or try to kick a field goal. So here we go. Is our return man. Not a great return. Get out to the about the 16-yard lines. First and 10. All right. So uh, what do we do for our first play? Let's try a running play off tackle left with our sort of two running back formation. Let's go. Not a great play. Not a great play. How about end around from the wide receiver? They're playing with a three safety look, so might be okay to run on these guys. Yeah, wide receiver got a few yards there, so it's third and six. Might be time for a pass play. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so we got some interesting plays here that we're going to have to talk about in a minute. Let's try slant 1B. So we got this receiver, you know, doing a quick slant. Um, the running back doing a sort of a wide arrow route. And then uh, this guy doing a post corner. No, the other way around. A, anyway, out and corner. Looking, looking, looking. He drops it off to the running back first down. We do have an excellent quarterback, so maybe we should pass the ball a little bit more. Now, this playbook also has something called RPO, run pass option. So the this is where the quarterback can read the defense and decide whether to hand it off or to pass it. So here's the run pass option. Right now, it looks like he's probably going to hand it off because the defense is way back there, but we shall see. Call the play. He does indeed hand it off to number 92. Gets a few yards, gets four yards, second and six. Um, let's try the sprint left. Nah, off tackle left. Here we go. Running back, good block by the fullback. Almost got out there. Let's try the quarterback dive just to get a yard. Uh, that was a bad, that's the worst dive I've ever seen in the history of the world. So... Do we play conservative or do we go for it? I say we go for it. Ooh, I don't like that. They are stacked back there. I bet you they will stop us. Um, so you know what? We can go to special teams and we can punt. I'm going to play it safe after all. So there we go. As you can see, that you know you can call audibles at the line of scrimmage. Okay, nice tackle. That would have been bad news. I'm gonna keep blitzing this guy until he stops it. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. He gets outside. Linebacker stops him. Third and two. Third and short. We need to stop. Nope. Not gonna do it. First and ten. Let's try the triple blitz. He runs away from the blitz. He's figured out our defense already. Uh, you just run to the weak side, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to stop that. We can't really change formations. <laughs> he can just run to the weak side all day long. He didn't get many yardage there. You know, we got <clears throat> number thirty. I think is a safety, or no, he might be our other cornerback moving up. There we go. Now we've we've got him figured out again. Yeah, got him figured out. Third and 13. I doubt he can get 13 yards on a running play. Nope, not going to do it. He's in field goal range now, so we'll go special teams. And we'll pick field goal defense. Looks like he's going to punt, so we'll go punt return. The difference between field goal and punt is, his punt has two guys wide. You know, if it was field goal, these guys would be inside tight to the line. So he is punting it. And a good thing, too, because it didn't get to to the uh, goal. All right. So now let's open up the offense a little bit. Let's try some passing plays. Uh, let's try the old running back angle. Some people call this the Texas. We shall see. Oh, he's wide open, but he throws it. Wow, what a catch. Double covered. And wide receiver number one, Shields, makes the catch. 
Okay, let's try the RPO four. Simple play. Play action fake. Throws it over the middle. Caught by number 16. Second and five. So the passing game is working pretty good. Try the uh, running back game. Another arrow route, this time by the fullback. Fullback covered, but he cut, pops open. Oh, he breaks a tackle. It's Copeland running the ball there. So the passing game seems to be looking pretty good here. Running back fly. Let's give this one a try. Nope. Oh, drop pass or good defense, one or the other. I have yet to see an interception in this game. Uh, I read on Twitter from the developer that uh, he said they increased the percentage chance of a uh, interception, but I haven't seen it. So I might be... There's another completion. Third and four. I might be eating my words here. Let's see. Third and four. Let's try the uh, the slant 1B again. Caught it. Shields. All right. Uh, let's hit him with a run. Let's hit him with a draw. They might not be expecting the draw play. No. They're all over that. Okay. Running back angle. No, I don't like that one. Circle. Let's try the RPO again, see what he does with it. Oh, he hands it off this time. Good block. Our fullback is a really good blocker, but now it's third and five. Try the running back circle. No, that's not good. We got guys running out of the end zone here. Um, no, running back fly. No, no, no. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if uh, one of our receivers can break open underneath. Uh, nope. Okay, so we're going to have to kick a field goal. I have no idea what our kicker is like. I didn't really look at him, so here we go. Call the play. And he makes it. <clears throat> there we go. 3-0 at 3-0. 3-0. We're up. All right. So far, this has been a tightly contested game. Neither team is particularly good on offense. <laughs> Trying that wide receiver sweep again. Look at that holding by number 26. Come on, buddy. You can't just grab onto my guy's back. I keep calling the same defense, and it keeps working. So, you know, there is pretty decent AI in this game. I mean, the computer does adapt the longer you play but uh you know sometimes there's nothing they can do about it because your team is just better than theirs or your playbook is just better than theirs there's some of that going on for sure um let's try another run let's try sprint left oh what a move by the full the halfback juked the whole team wow Outstanding Espinoza 59.9 yards, so a 60 yard touchdown run for number 92. You know, the numbering system in this game is a little bit off, uh, <laughs> they definitely don't adhere to any sort of numbering standards that you would expect, but you know, it's a small thing. So, there we go, up two scores. Now, the one thing you won't notice here is a clock. Um, there's no clock. There's no way to tell time that I know of. Um, I know that uh, there's a certain number of plays or a certain number of downs that each team gets, but I don't know how many that is. I've never sat and counted. So it's just sort of like you get a feeling that the game might end soon, and that's what I think. I think we got a few more plays left in us before the game ends, but it's hard to tell sometimes. All right, now we're just calling the, the man 1D two times blitz, and it seems to be working. That play is their best blocked play, but, uh, you know, their receiver is kind of slow, so he's not really great at running the ball. Third and seven. Got him. Fourth and four. 
He is going to punt it, so we will go punt return. Here we go. I've never seen a fumble in this game either, so I don't think turnovers are a thing, at least not so far. So let's just try to run out the clock. We know that our halfback can, uh, he's got touchdown material. So we'll just give him some carries, see what he can do. Oh, that's, our receiver out here is not a very good blocker. That's disappointing. Um, let's try running back game. See what we can do here. 99, he was open for a second. Quarterback's got nowhere to go. He just runs it. All right. Special team punt. Kicker doesn't have the best leg. Oof. I've noticed that uh, sometimes when teams are completely frustrated offensively, sometimes they can bust a special team's touchdown, a punt return or kick return, something like that. And uh, I don't know if that's, you know, built-in mechanism of the game, but, uh, you know, it happens. There we go. Game over. You can see it just sort of ended. I don't know why. You know, just time up. Time's up even though there's no time. Just a certain number of plays you get per game. And that's it. So there we go. The machine, they tried zero passes. Run, running back had 14 attempts for 30.5 yards. That's not very good. About a little over two yards of carry. Uh, Dominguez on defense played well. Seven tackles. On our, our side... Walsh, the quarterback, was six of eight for sixty-one yards. Not a not a great game, but good, you know, good completion percentage. Eight rushes for seventy-six yards. One of those was a sixty-yard run, though, so that kind of uh, skews those stats. Shields four receptions. Marquez six tackles. Marquez four kick returns. So there you go. There's there's the game. Um, let's see. Once you've played your game. Then you can sort of simulate the CPU games to see the scores and everything. So if you want to look at the team leaders, well, they don't have the week yet. But once, once all the games are finished, you can hit finish week. And then that moves you to the next week. And uh, maybe that was preseason. Maybe the first game is preseason. Yeah, the first game says right there, preseason. All right. So we won 10-0 in the preseason then we can get to the regular season and play a bunch of games but there you go it's a neat little uh, game oh there's also free agency so if your roster you know is just really bad and you need to pick up some free agents there's some guys available they're not real good usually but uh you know if there's just a big nasty hole in your roster and uh, you know maybe you drafted poorly or you've you figured out one player is particularly bad. Like I had that in one season where I went through the draft and everything and I accidentally picked a middle linebacker who had like two strength. And so every play he was just getting pushed aside like a little leaf in the wind. So I had to go in free agency and find somebody who could play linebacker and, uh, you know, and was a little bit stronger. Like I would have picked this guy, Angel Huerta, 64 strength, only 61 speed, 62 linebacker, not great, but he's cheap. And, uh, you know, he can probably, you know, he can tackle and he can blitz. That's sort of what you want from your linebackers. So I probably would have picked him up in that situation. So you can do that in free agency and uh, just fill out your team if there's some sort of roster need you have. So there you go. That's the game. They've they've got college in here. You don't play any of these games. You just sort of keep an eye on the players because the players in these college games will then be available for the draft. So you can just sort of manually scout these teams, I guess, and uh, keep an eye on their players and say, you know, is anybody on their team fast? No. Is anybody strong? You know, is anybody a good passer? Like maybe we'll keep an eye on this guy who's 19 years old. So in a couple of years, he'll be eligible for the draft, that kind of thing. Um, that's it. That's the game. It's neat. I like it. And uh, if you like it too, give it a shot. It's available on Steam right now. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.
Bye-bye.